Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Friends in this video we will discuss it is a PSU power supply circuit card for Hitachi TV for Hyundai TV we will discuss its functional description how it is working how the circuit will work and we will discuss the troubleshooting steps if we get some fault in the board how we can troubleshoot it, it is JSK 4210 Dash 022. It is its rear side view. We have some ICs here L6599, L6562, Fan7602, LM393. We will check their function. Basically, this video is a requested video from one of my viewers. He sent me this message and he told me that he have fluctuation at this 5 volt SB from 4.6 volt to 4.8 volt and then he told me that he have also fluctuation on this optocoupler for standby section he have also problem in this SMPS controller VCC pin he sent me the circuit diagram but I will explain how you can find a circuit diagram first of all go to google JSK4210-022 service manual I am searching the service manual for the board where we can find the model number of the board it is here JSK4210-022 or we can find the model number of the TV set that is on the model plate identification plate there is a model number you can use that model number also or you can use the model number of the board and always try to search service manual if you cannot find the service manual then you can search for circuit diagram schematic so it is here the best site for circuit diagrams if you want to download circuit diagram for TV sets for monitors for washing machines for different circuits you can find the circuit diagram or service manual from electrotania.com and there is also electronica.pt.com it is also a very useful site fixia.com it have also the circuit diagram tv led dot dash sib dash ru this so here we can find we can open it when we will open it it will give a data for the file it is power supply and 4.9 MB size and here it is preview and here you have to select this checkbox I am not a robot it will say select tractors here is tractor it is just only a routine check so then go to download you have to tick the option and you have to wait for a few seconds here it is download option download in the bottom left corner there is this file it is being downloaded show all once the download is complete open the folder so here is this part this diagram we can open it service manual for this board JSK4210-022 specifications different parameters are cover covered here and it says 5 volt SB it has 1 ampere 5 volt 2 ampere 24 volt 5 ampere 12 volt 2 ampere so here it is schematic circuit diagram and then in the same service manual data sheets for the ICs it is L6599 high voltage resonant controller fan 7602 that is SMPS controller for standby section PFC controller L6562 and here we have LM393 comparator dual comparator in the left top corner here we have an input jack line and neutral then we have here fuse dual line filter first stage and second stage for removal of harmonics and then we have class 5 capacitor here here is a bridge rectifier bridge rectifier bridge rectifier will rectify the voltage and it will charge the capacitor on 
the routine voltage and it will turn on this standby section from standby section we will take 5 volt out when we will receive power on command in that case first of all it will turn on this power factor correction circuit pfc circuit it have a mosfet and a rectifier and a choke and it will charge this capacitor at a, approximately 400 volt then it will turn on this mosfet section this push pull power supply section and here we have 24 volt and 12 volt section and in the meantime we will also take 5 volt from this section the first it will give 5 volt sb now it will give 5 volt for the circuit operation other than the standby voltage we have three micro we have three optocouplers here one two and three this optocoupler ic1 that is used for regulation in this high current power high power power supply section and this one ic3 that is for voltage regulation of this standby section and we have ic2 that is for switching that is for powering on the circuit the rear side view here we have input terminal we have first stage filter second stage filter then we have set protections here here we have capacitors class y capacitors bridge rectifier and here we have l6562 that is resonant pfc controller we have capacitor here the pfc choke and the resistors and diodes and all circuit here this is the voltage feedback line the sense line for the output section and here we have fan 7602 this is for standby section here we have standby transformer and it will generate voltage for standby and then we, when we will receive the PSN command from this point this 5 volt will switch to PSN command and this voltage will reach here at this switching network and we have here a transistor that is US4 switching transistor number 4 and it will turn on optocoupler this optocoupler will, will turn on this PFC controller and uh, when PFC voltage will maintained at that time this line will reach to this L6599D so it will turn on this push pull power supply circuit it will switch and we will receive high high power output here we have current sense network let's explain on the diagram here we have neutral and line fuse and here we have class Y capacitor CY1, CY2 these are for common mode and differential mode noises CX1 X-rated capacitor, Y-rated capacitor first stage and second stage filter to protect the circuit from high frequency spikes and noises then we have here bridge rectifier we will receive the rectified voltage at these two points this point and this point this point for positive voltage this point for negative voltage the ground side when this voltage will reach here and it will start to flow the current in two parts the first path is here the second path is for this NTC when the first pulse will rectify it and current will flow from this inductor diode and it will charge C6 capacitor that is the main bulk capacitor here we have C6 capacitor so the current will pass from all this mechanism and the current will pass from this PFC choke and this rectifier and it will reach at this capacitor and it will start charging. Now the first current will start to flow this inductor will generate a magnetic field and it will also oppose to flow of current because the building magnetic field also induces a inductive reactance. So current have to pass from this thermistor, this is NTC1. From here to diode D1, A, D1 and we will receive voltage at this point. So capacitor will start charging from this part. Here we have TH1, D1, A and D1, these three components. The output of the bridge rectifier will pass from these components and we will receive voltage at this capacitor. The capacitor will charge linearly. When the capacitor is charged and the voltage are maintained at VDC point, so we will receive voltage at this terminal. This is our standby section. In standby section, we have T1A, T1 transformer. Where is that? 
This one is T1 transformer. In the primary side, we will receive voltage at pin 5 and at 6 number pin is connected to Q4 that is MOSFET and MOSFET have a shunt resistance here R47 and the drive pin the gate pin is connected to this IC that is GD gate drive so this IC will receive VDC voltage at latch pin when the voltage will reach at a specific level this pin will be enabled we can say it is startup pin then we have VSTR pin it will monitor how much voltage are available at the DC rail. This is under voltage over voltage protection. This pin is CS current sense and feedback pin. Pin number 4 is ground. So this IC will start switching. At specific voltage level it will enable the circuit to power on. So it will start pulses at pin number 5 and it will switch this MOSFET. When the MOSFET will switch it will cause to flow the current from this ground line R47 shunt resistance this MOSFET and primary winding and VDC so it will start to build magnetic field in the primary so it will cause to switch voltage in the secondary we will receive voltage in the secondary section this transformer have one primary one secondary and it have two auxiliary windings the first winding this winding for VCC so it will generate voltage and the voltage will rectify it through D12 it will charge C27 and we will receive voltage at pin number 6. In the secondary section, DS5, DS10 rectifier, it will rectify the voltage and we will find the voltage at these capacitors. Then we have LS3 inductor for smoothing the voltage and here we have a current limiting resistor for this optocoupler. In the second side of the LS3 voltage divider network, it will give a reference voltage to TL431 ICS3 that is here when the voltage will maintain at 5 volts it will enable this optocoupler optocoupler IC3A one portion the input side is here the second portion IC3B that is here so this is one IC it is shown in two places so it will enable this IC so that this voltage will switch to current sense pin and feedback pin current sense that is multi-function pin then it will start switching it will switch the MOSFET and current will start to flow in the primary so how much current is flowing that will cause to drop voltage at R47 the voltage will transfer through this current limiting R44 resistor to pin number 3 and the meantime we are when the voltage are received it will switch the voltage to pin number 3 as well so this varying voltage how it will vary it will vary due to the amount of current how much current is flowing in this q4 and how much the load voltage the output voltage are built up so we will take 5 volt sb these are connected to this connector number 4 pin number 8 this voltage will go to the motherboard when anyone will turn on the board we will receive these 5 volt on PS on we will receive a 5 volt signal at pin number 9 now let's discuss the second portion of the auxiliary winding of this transformer that is here T1B T1B the same voltage because the primary is switching and we are taking voltage in the SP section so the same winding is placed in the same transformer same transformer it will give voltage and rectified at this capacitor and this voltage will reach at Q6 so Q6 is now disabled how it will work as we discussed the motherboard will generate a PS on command or we can generate our own local command by applying jumper to pin 8 and 9 so SB voltage will go to pin number 9 if we turn on this board without the TV set so PS on voltage will reach here at this point so this transistor will switch it will connect this ground line to this IC2A 5 volt SB are also connected to this current limiting resistor for biasing this optocoupler IC2A which we discussed here this one is IC2A and this one is QS4 switching transistor number 4 that is here and optocoupler is IC2A is here it will switch and it will cause to 
flow the current in this input section and it will generate a light and this light will turn on the secondary side the output side full transistor so it will connect this ground line to this voltage divider network for this base bicycle network the rectified voltage from this winding are available at this point and this voltage will switch to this charge this c8 capacitor so now c8 capacitor will charge and this is voltage regulator and we will find a regulated voltage at this vcc pin that is output of q5 now we received vcc voltage and vcc voltage will reach at this pin pin number 8 of this pfc controller and this voltage will reach at this push pull driver circuit ic pin number 12 we will receive the voltage vcc voltage at pin number 12 of this ic and pin number 8 of this ic now let's discuss this pfc circuit this is power factor correction circuit as we discussed we will receive vcc voltage so this ic should work this ic requires the input voltage how much voltage are coming out from the bridge rectifier so bridge rectifier output is connected to pin number three and how much voltage are available at the output capacitor the bulk capacitor that is from this voltage divider network so these voltage are provided here then we have zcd l1b so l1b that is actually the part of this resonant pfc coil that is here pin number six is ground pin number four is current sense pin so this ic will monitor the output level and it will start switching it will determine how much voltage are coming out from the bridge rectifier and how much voltage are the capacitor for example it need 400 volt here at this capacitor and it is giving approximately we can say we are applying 200 volt at line and neutral so multiply 200 volt with 1.41 for example we are taking 290 volt in the output of the bridge rectifier because it is universal power supply it will work from 85 volt to 265 volt so what is the voltage level at the output of the bridge it will sense it here it have to monitor 400 volt at this capacitor so how much the difference it will start the switching the switching pulses power and time duty cycle will depend on the voltage level here and voltage level here when it will start switching it will generate a surge so a heavy current will flow from l1a inductor through this mosfet to r31 and ground so this current will cause to generate a magnetic field in l1a in the off time of the pulse this magnetic field will collapse this path is closed now because the mosfet is off so voltage have to pass through this d2 so these voltage will come in the series of output of the bridge rectifier this voltage from output of the bridge rectifier and the voltage generated by this inductor due to collapsing of magnetic field so this voltage will become in series so it will pass this voltage through this d2 diode it will rectify and the voltage will maintained at this capacitor at 400 volt so it will adjust its switching period turn on time vs turn, turn off time duty cycle depending on the voltage difference between this capacitor and this bridge point and it will check how much the magnetic field is being built up so l1b will give a feedback to adjust its magnetizing current so how much current is flowing so it will monitor at pin number four by checking the voltage drop at, at r31 when it will maintain 400 volts vdc so the same vdc are applied to line pin that is to monitor the voltage at dc rail so dc rail must be 400 volt to turn on this this push pull driver circuit then it have vcc pin vcc are applied from this vcc network here we have discharge pin standby section then we have rf the frequency resistor and cf that is rtct and here we have soft start then we have ground pin then we have delay pin so these components are for frequency generation and startup 
then we have iSense that is grunt sense pin we will discuss it and we have LVG HVG these two pins LVG and HVG for high side MOSFET drive and low side MOSFET drive so these two MOSFETs will switch on their turn to generate magnetic field in the primary when this MOSFET will turn on it will pass a positive voltage to this winding through this diode D7 and we have R35 so how much current will flow it will monitor the voltage drop at this R35 and it will reach at pin number 6 when this MOSFET will off this MOSFET will on because it is resonant switcher collapsing magnetic field will take the ground line from the same point so it will work as a push pull circuit in the secondary side we have full wave rectifier and we have DS4, DS3 and DS14, DS5, DS15 these are full wave rectifier for 24 volt section this section is for 24 volt and this circuit is for 12 volt here we have RS34 and here we have RS14 point C and here we have a point B and point C are connected to this LM393 that is voltage comparator this comparator have inverting and non-inverting inverting is pin number 2 and non-inverting is pin number 3 and here pin number 5 and 6 input pin number, pin number 7 is output so pin 1 and 7 are outputs the non-inverting input that is connected to a reference resistor the reference is applied to this pin and the output of the circuit is applied to non-inverting input if the current will increase in this line or this line it will cause to drop voltage in the respective resistor RS14 or RS34 if we have a short circuit for example here so it will cause to build a voltage level in this resistor the dropped voltage will apply to the sense pin the inverting pin of this comparator so any section will cause to drive high current it will generate error its output will go high when it will go high it will switch this transistor when it will switch this transistor it will connect this ground line to this RS2 and here we have 5 volt SB now we have to check this point very carefully as we discussed in the first stage at this, that time 5 volt were applied to this optocoupler and this optocoupler was on now this line is dropped because we connected our direct ground line through this RS2 to this line so this line will drop and this optocoupler will turn off why because these voltage level are dropped this optocoupler the internal light will decrease because it requires one volt but there will a surge on this line due to action of this circuit when this transistor will switch so it will cause to lower the voltage on this line so that this optocoupler will turn off when this optocoupler will turn off the primary side the input side it will turn off this tra transistor at that time and this Q6 will go in off state when it is in cutoff state so the VCC voltage will turn off when the VCC is disconnected the PFC circuit will go off and this circuit will go off because the VCC voltage are disconnected due to overcurrent in this line or this line it will cause to terminate the function of the circuit we turn on and due to overcurrent the circuit will turn off immediately if we have like fault like this then we have to check the overcurrent sensor and this IC is involved in current sense circuit that is LM393 that is here this switching circuit this, these components are for current sensing and Q4 that is here QS4 Q7 Q8 network so this temperature controlling network compensation network that is connected at this pin A if the circuit internal temperature will increase at that time this circuit will compensate and it will start linear switching to maintain the voltage 
at SV voltage. When the voltage 24 volt and 12 volt are maintained, we have a voltage divider network here. 12 volt is connected through current limit resistor RS11 to the anode and cathode side is connected to this IC1. This is TL431. Here we have voltage divider network at 20, 24 volt. So it will take a reference. The summit point reference will reach here and when the both lines are maintained at specific 12 volt and 24 volt it will switch this optocoupler and this optocoupler the second portion of this IC that is here IC1B IC1 is here so here is TL431 and this IC is here so it, it will give a feedback to adjust the RF to ad change the switching frequency because this IC maintains the voltage level by changing its frequency in HVG and LVG section. Now, if we have short circuit, if our fuse is burnt, we can check bridge, we can check these protections, class Y, class X capacitors, RV1, resistor. If any component will become short in this parallel line, short circuit, the fuse will burn out. If we have any protection damaged, this fuse will burn out. If this MOSFET is damaged, so it will discharge this this line directly to the ground and it will also cause to damage the bridge rapidly. Most of the time when this MOSFET is damaged, this bridge rectifier gets damaged. In some cases, out of two MOSFETs, one or both MOSFETs are damaged. We have to check that. And R35, in some time, in some cases this R35 is damaged or R31 is damaged. If these two are damaged, this circuit will not power on. Now, in this case, when we have fluctuation at 5 volt SP, that is the basic voltage, it should not have fluctuation. If we find fluctuation, we have to disconnect QS1. QS1 is here. Disconnect QS1 so that we can disconnect the next circuit. Either the short circuit is in QS1 or next circuit or in the rear side. Most of the time, the problem is in this area some capacitor is leak or uh, might be this TL431 or optocoupler it have some issue sometime this VCC capacitor have some issue and we can also disconnect this diode D9 so D9 is our VCC section so when we will remove D9 at that time our this circuit will isolate it so we have to determine where is the problem because when there is fluctuation might be we have some issue in this circuit if this capacitor is bad how we can determine here we have to just only disconnect this diode d19 we have to clear this section so if this vcc voltage are maintained we can check this optocoupler we can check this protection if this transistor or this zener is interrupting because this is for over voltage so it will also change the conduction of this optocoupler so it will also cause to make variation if this transistor because it is over voltage protection if there is a over current due to leakage of any capacitor so it will also a reason of fluctuation when the voltage are maintained here and we receive 12, 12 volt here and 24 volt here these 12 volt when the 12 volt are maintained that voltage will reach here at this point and it will cause to switch this QS1 and QS1 will switch these voltage 5 volt rectified voltage SB voltage to the output section that is 5 volt 5 ampere so it is 5 volt 5 ampere is here in the first attempt we received just only 5 volt SB but when we turned on by power on a command so we received 24 volt from this point 12 volt from 12 volt jack and we received 5 volt 5 ampere for the next circuit operation so due to any overcurrent due to any protection this circuit will disable 
the circuit and it will cut off this PSR command. So friends, I hope so this video is informative for you. If it is informative, give a thumb up. If you have not subscribed my channel, subscribe it. If you want to watch my videos in future, subscribe and press bell icon button. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, if you have suggestion, let me know in the comment box. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.